What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mine Tech and today we're going to be continuing out with our Raspberry Pi 5 home lab server that we started building out in the last video. So last video we set up Docker, Portainer, got the basics set up. Today we're going to be continuing on with that and we're going to be incorporating the M.2 hat that I put on the Raspberry Pi or your external hard drive or whatever you're using. We're going to be making a network share using a Samba container to build out a network share for our home lab. So for me, I'm using my Pi 5, like I said. I have the M.2 hat that I talked about in the last video, and this Inland NVMe drive that I picked up at Micro Center for sale. You could use whatever drive you want. You could use a USB SSD, you could use a regular USB HDD, whatever you have available to use is something you could use in this project. Like I said, I'm just using the M.2 drive because it's what I have. I got the hat, so I'm just working with it. But this works universally with anything you could have. I'm going to power this up. I already have my drive in. We're going to go over setting that up, but I already have that all set up. I'm going to power up the Pi, and then we're going to get into how to set it all up. Okay, so all I did was boot up the Raspberry Pi, and I SSH'd in using PuTTY. So I ended up having my IP change in my Raspberry Pi, so it's important to make sure you set a static IP. If you're going to be moving forward with this project because something like this could happen and then it doesn't come up luckily i was able to get through the host name which is just pi hosted local and i was able to ssh and see that my pi was online now that it's online the first thing we're going to do is check to make sure that our hard drive is showing so we're going to use lsblk and you can see over here it's going to show all the storage devices that the device sees so we have our micro sd card and our mvme driver that i'm using if you're using a sata ssd or sata hdd you would see something over here showing that there's another drive and however big the storage is most likely if it's a fresh drive there's not going to be any partitions which is fine i'm going to show you how to partition the drive because we do need that to use for the network share we're going to be building out now i, I kind of forgot to mention we're going to be building out a network share so we're kind of making our raspberry pi into sort of like a budget nas in a sense so we're going to be able to use the drive that's on the raspberry pi and be able to access it across our entire network where by doing this we're going to be able to use it for our raspberry pi projects we're going to do like possibly a plex server or some other projects we might be hosting but we also can make it storage that can be accessed from your phone other laptops in the network other pcs in the network other devices in the network you could just whack whack over to them and then you could have access to any of the files that you stored on that storage share so that's what we're going to be building out today. I, I forgot to mention that, so I just wanted to put that out there. But let's get right back into setting this up. Okay, so now that we have our Raspberry Pi up and then our drive is being seen, now we could start with partitioning it. So I do have this GitHub write-up that I wrote up a while back for another project that goes over how to do this using FDisk. So we're just going to follow along with this today. I'll put a link down below so you could use it as well. So we already did LSB OK. So that's just to see our disks. And now we can identify which one we want to partition and format. So we're going to use fdisk to do this process. When you do fdisk, just make sure that you're working with the proper disk that you want to format. Because if you format the wrong disk, you're going to lose everything on there. And it's just going to be a big time bummer. So we're just going to do sudo fdisk. And then we're going to use dev slash r drive. So if you start actually typing out your drive, it should be able to tap out. But it's not right now for me. So it's hit or miss sometimes. I'm just going to hit enter. So I just ran the command again. For some reason, when I was typing it out, it failed out. But you're just going to do sudo fdisk, and then you're going to do slash dev, and whatever drive you're working with. So you can see over here now, I'm in fdisk. Now we're just going to follow along with these lines that I have over here. So we want to make a new partition, so we're going to use n. Now it's going to ask us if we want it to be primary or not. We do, so we're going to do p. We're going to do one partition, so it uses up all the space. We're going to hit enter. We're going to enter again. We're going to do yes. I, I have a signature on here already because I made it ext4. That's why it asked me if I want to remove it. This was a disk that I previously set up for something else. But you wouldn't have that option. But if you are reusing a disk, this is something that you would already see. That's why it asked if you want to remove the signature. So now this is all set. So we could do wr to actually write it to the disk. I'm going to do a clear. I'm going to do lsblk. You can see over here now I have a partition. So just to run through that again, because it might have been a little confusing, we're going to use sudo fdisk to access our drive. So mine was nvme01. So I just did dev slash nvme01. Then it's going to open up the fdisk menu, and it's going to go through some prompts. 
we added a new partition just by using N and then press and enter. From there it asked if we wanted a primary or an extended, I believe it was, partition. So I did P for primary. We want one partition because that's all I wanted for this drive. If you want more, you can specify. And then we hit enter to go through and, and apply those settings. After that was done, we just used WR to write that to the block and then it was able to finish out the menu and now we have a partition. Okay, so now that our partition is made, we need to assign a file structure to the disk and the partition. So to do that, we're just gonna scroll down and use these next set of commands, which is gonna be sudo mkfs.ext4 and it's gonna be our drive and partition. So over here you can just see I wrote out the command, it's sudo mkfs.ext4 slash dev slash nvme 0 n one p one for my partition over here. I'm just going to click enter, and now over here you can see that it's right in the file system to it. And we should be all set, and it looks like we're good to go. So now the only thing left to do is to mount this to a directory. So we can actually just put that through to portainer and be able to use this for our share. One thing to keep in mind by doing this is that if the device reboots, it's going to unmount the disk from that share. So if you want, you could set it to auto mount using the fstab file or fstab, however you prefer to pronounce it. Over here, I do go through how to do that in this guide. I don't prefer to do this anymore because I've had some issues in the past with it. So I'll just remount it after I reboot my device if I need to. But right now we're just going to go over how to do that. We're just going to clear everything out and we're going to see where we are. And currently you can see we're in slash carmine. So I'm just going to do cd dot dot cd dot dot. And then we're going to come back into our dot slash. So by doing this, I'm just putting myself in a directory all the way home. So hopefully there's no permissions issues. So if I do a dir. We could just see what's over here and then over here we're just going to make a quick directory that we're going to use for it and we're just going to call it nas so now if i do dir again you can see i have over here my nas so now that we have our directory made we just need to mount it so we're going to use sudo mount so i'm just going to do sudo mount slash dev slash and we're going to come over here and grab the drive but the partition of it so it's going to be the one below it over here it's going to be NVMe. You can see if I start to tab, it starts to autofill. We can just hit tab again, and then we're going to be all set. So now I have my partition. So we're using this port of the drive over here. And now we're just going to tell it where to mount to. So for me, it's slash NAS. Wherever you're using the directory is where you're going to mount to. And now you can see that it's all set over here. So now that this is all done, we can actually go into Portainer and start the setup in the Docker container. So you can see over here that I'm just logged into the machine over here. I'm just into the basic Portainer instance. I'm gonna come over here, click local, and then we're gonna come over to templates. And here I'm going to search Samba. So we're gonna be using the Samba container because it's a lightweight network storage. It's very easy to set up. And like I said, it's lightweight, so it's not gonna really use a lot of resources. We don't need anything special on top of it because we are running Docker. We could do the rest of the containerization through there. So that's why we're just gonna be running a simple Samba share off of this. Now, the only options that you do wanna change over here is if you wanna change the, the username and password, you could do that over here. I'm just gonna leave it guess guess for now, but this is where you would wanna change it. Then we're just going to come down here to show advanced settings. And over here is where we're going to change the volume map. And so over here is the only part that's going to change. The container side is share. So that's what's going to be shared from the Samba container. The host side is where the files that you want to share will live. So I don't want to use portainer slash downloads. I just want to use slash NAS. So this is going to be the actual host side. That's why it's called host. Other than that, you should be all set. So you just gotta put in the directory that we just made and mounted the drive to. I'm gonna click deploy container. We're gonna give this a few minutes to deploy. It is a little slow. It takes a few minutes to get online, but it'll be all set when we're all done. You can see it's starting up right now and there's actually logs that will go. So once this is all ready, we'll be right back and we'll be able to access it. One thing that we can do in the meantime while this is starting to boot up is make sure that we have the proper IP of our Raspberry Pi. So like I said, mine changed, so I don't really know what it is at the moment. So I'm gonna come over to the SSH the SSH session that I have, we're gonna do IP space A. And you can see over here, we're gonna to start to have multiple IPs, and this is because of the Docker network and that's going on. So when you install Docker, it builds its own network in the background, and this is why you're gonna have additional adapters. So just look for the adapter, it's gonna most likely be E0, and it's gonna have the IP scheme that you use in your house. So over here, you can see that my IP just changed to .93. 
the container is up and running so we should be good to connect to it there's multiple ways we could do this you could either do it through file explorer or you could hold windows r and over here you can see it's going to open up run over here we could just do whack whack and then the ip mine's 93 we're going to hit enter it popped up on my other monitor but it's asking for our credentials so it's just going to be guest guest unless you changed it and then over here it's going to open up with our file explorer that's going to show our nas and you can see over here there's portainer so this is actually going to be our network share that we've made so you can just see that it has lost and found if i come over here and i cd into nas you can see that we have lost and found if i do touch bar mine and i come back over here into my file explorer you can see now we have a new file named bar mine if i come over to file explorer and i click new item and i click folder and i do bar mines stuff and you can see now i made the folder in my windows machine and if i come back over here to the ssh test and into the machine i do a directory you can see here's bar mine stuff so now we have a nas that's working across our network off of the two devices so if you have media that you want to put on here, maybe you have pictures or videos that you want to be able to access off this. Maybe you're going to make like a, a frigate or an image server or maybe, you know, a MB or Jellyfin or something like that. You could put it on here and you can use it across all of your network and the Docker containers that we're going to be working with in the future. So now you can see that our network share is all up and running. So like I said, this was just the goal to make a simple network share by using the Samba container. It's lightweight and really easy to set up. The hardest part is formatting your disk and getting the partitions right. Other than that, now we have a budget NAS that's working off of our Raspberry Pi. It's low cost and it's a lot cheaper than buying out a regular NAS. Of course, we don't have the additional disks, the RAID, and everything else running. But for the budget, we can make it work. Now that this is set up, we're going to start working further on this Raspberry Pi. We're going to set up other containers. Like I said, we're going to try to do a Plex server. Being that there is onboard graphics, I want to see how the hardware transcoding would work. And now we have a network share to save our media to. So being that we're coming up on 5,000 subscribers, I have something exciting that I want to announce. And it's going to be that we're going to be doing a giveaway on the channel. It's going to be an Elite Desk 800 G3. It's going to have some pretty decent specs. So when whoever wins it receives it, they'll be all set to start building out whatever they'd like to build with it. There will only be one winner for this, and I would be the only person that's going to be reaching out to say, hey, you won, and this giveaway is going to be ran completely in Discord. So if you're not a member of the Discord server already, I highly recommend you get over there and you start participating, because to be able to participate in this giveaway, you do need to be level three in the discord server so by doing that it means you need to actually participate and send some messages in the discord i set this as a requirement just to ensure that that we have actual members that are joining that can have a chance at winning this giveaway i just i'm trying to double rule out that there's any bots or anything else in the server so we don't have any fake winners this is just my thank you to everyone who has supported the channel over the last couple of years and being that 2025 starting off I, I figured why not start off strong with a nice new giveaway being that we're on the hunt to 5000 i'll have more info in the discord if you're interested in checking it out so be sure to join the server and start sending some messages and participate in some of the conversations that we have just to get that rank up so you can actually enter into this giveaway like i said i'll be the only person that's going to be messaging anybody so only keep an eye out for my direct message in the discord server i'm not going to dm you i'm not going to message you on instagram youtube your gmail nothing it's only going to be through the giveaway section on the discord server there'll be no other communication i won't ask for your credit card i won't ask for any shipping costs everything's going to be just a straight up giveaway so please don't fall victim to any scams like i said if you're looking for any more info go over the discord server i have it all there other than that i want to thank you all for watching i have links to all the gear i use in my home lab below if you're ever interested in checking any of it out i'll have a link to the discord server as well and i want to thank you all for watching i'll see you in the next video